congratulations on your round five Buildings of Excellence Award. I'm super excited to hear about the project in the building, but before we do that, introduce yourselves. I'm Marianne Hyde, I'm a principal at ZH Architects. Ed Yeager, I'm a board member treasurer at Amalgamated Houses. I'm Avery Gray, I'm a project manager and a sustainability director at ZH Architects. Stash Zakshevsky, principal at ZH Architects. So maybe tell me a little bit about the building itself. The, first of all, the Amalgamated as a co-op started in 1927, so we're two years away from our 100th anniversary. This building was built in 1940 or 41, <clears throat> and the, it, it needs a total rehab. The cost of restoration, the cost difference is almost minimal when you look at it. Given the age of our co-op, we're here for the long haul. So we look at things not in terms of today's cost, but in terms of the long-term future. This building, when refurbished and redone by ZH, will do three things for us. It will provide greater comfort for the people who live in the building, it will reduce our emissions, and it will save the co-op money in the long haul. The, the, the extra cost of doing it this way is trivial compared to the long-term savings. That's exciting. Maybe, maybe dive into that a little bit more, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, well, the history of Amalgamated is an interesting one because um, the first building, it's first a complex of 13 buildings, and um, the first building was... Oh, They're all different. It, That's all the other different thing architectural that makes styles. Unique. Yeah. There's so many different designs. Yeah. Um, but the idea was it was one of the first limited equity um, co-ops, and there were garment workers who were down on the Lower East Side in you know, very poor housing conditions, and they wanted more. So they pitched together money and bought a piece of land and started to build this complex of buildings. Um, and so as these guys are about to do their 100th anniversary, they want to kind of reinvest the like um, energy and forward thinking that the people did 100 years ago into making this a very energy efficient campus. That's exciting. That's very cool. Um, tell us a little bit about the design of the building itself. Yeah, so, so as Ed had said, it's, it's a gut rehab of an existing building um, so a major aspect of the sustainability for the design and, and rehab will be meeting the past best Institute's Enterfit standard which is a uh, standard for renovation of existing buildings so it'll be uh, air tightness insulated envelope high performance windows uh, and that's an it's an interesting challenge and opportunity with an existing building when you're building new you can design whatever you need to but it's a, it's a unique design challenge working with the existing envelope and negotiating how that balances with interior layouts and, and all the different uh, considerations. Um, so the, the building will be very efficient and then there's also uh, another major aspect of the design is the materials, uh, which I think Stash can speak to. Yeah, so um, it's really important to try and save as many of the materials and, and structure of the building. So we're going to really look at um, well, we have been looking at the, the materials that have been renovated, There's one or two components that are already there, like the roofing, and then everything else, how we can work with what's there rather than take it away and demolish it. Can we reuse part of it? Can we uh, do all of that? And also to use uh, materials that are as uh, healthy as we can make them. Um, so we're looking at all sorts of uh, insulation types that are low embodied energy um, and also whether we can do it with insulation on the inside or whether we will do it on insulation on the outside. We're going to look at all of these different parameters so that we come up with a study that I hope will help many others to look at buildings like this all around New York, uh, all around U.S. Well, it's pretty exciting that it's a Buildings of Excellence award winner because that means it's giving you that venue to actually continue to show everybody how you're doing this. Um, maybe talk a little bit more about uh, what the Buildings of Excellence award means to the building as a whole. Well, this is our, we've been really fortunate. This is our third uh, winner. So, Congrats. Uh, thank you. Um, 
And it's been really interesting uh, to really see how the building has been performing, right? The, the one building that is finished now, Flow Chelsea, for example. And we really take a deep dive, not just us, but all of the other consultants that are doing other projects. And we've been learning from that, you know, how Passive House is different a little bit from here, from in Europe, these sorts of little lessons, how the building is operating, how we can help the folks to do all of this. And BOE has really helped us navigate that because a lot of times when buildings finish, it's like, oh my God, that's it. And there's more reason to keep going a little bit further. We all know that that takes time. Mm -hmm. And this allows us to have that time to analyze and look at things and then get it out there. It's really a perfect project for it. Congratulations. I mean, you're not only affecting the people in, in, within your community and with the building, but even extending way beyond that, all the solutions, the healthy materials and so forth that you're coming to. So uh, it's a great project. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Thanks again. Thank you. And keep up the great work, Passive House Accelerator. <laughs> <laughs>